Marilyn asks, why does laying on my mat make my arms and hands ache? Does that mean I shouldn't use it? Uh, so the question becomes, why do the arms and hands ache? If the arms and the hands ache every time you lay down on your back for the same amount of time without doing magnetic therapy, then it's a physical problem in the body. Right? Then the there's a problem in the body that's causing that problem, and it's just laying down and doing the magnetic therapy because you're laying down is not the problem. If it's not a problem, otherwise, when you duplicate the same amount of laying down time, then and in the same position, so if you don't have your neck propped up properly, um, then you're more likely to get aching down your arms and hands. There's a good chance it's coming from the neck, most likely. That there's probably arthritis or um, a disc problem in the neck. And the certain positions of the neck, chronic positions with the head turned or tilted this way, and now we're talking about um, um, mobile phone overuse problems with the head being bent down all the time, the stretching the spine is causing all kinds of problems for people now, chronic pain problems because of that. Hours a day looking at your cell phone in a downward position. But the same thing could be true about reading on a desk, using a computer keyboard, having your monitor too low so your, your spine is not proper, properly uh, placed. And we actually have a discussion on the summit too about the spine and how the spine contributes to pain problems because of positioning. Very good uh, uh, interview, in fact. Um, so there's, there is a chance if it doesn't happen otherwise, if you can't duplicate it without doing the magnetic field therapy with the exactly same positioning, then what can happen with PEMF therapy is that, and this is one of the reasons that I recommend that people go low and slow. You start off with lower intensities and you gradually work up. Magnetic fields increase energy in tissues. They increase circulation in tissues. They stimulate those tissues. To go back to a point I've made multiple times through these webinars, is that magnetic field therapy is cellular training. It's like physical training, it's like sports training. You have to see what the tissues can handle before you go to the next level of stimulation. And not only the next level, we talk about dose. What's the intensity, how much treatment time, and how many times do you repeat your treatments? So that's the dose of the magnetic field. So if you start off low and slow, and you don't get that problem, but when you reach a certain level of magnetic stimulation, either in time that you're laying there getting treatment, or the intensity of the treatment, then what happens is that that's stimulating the nerves too much for them to handle. This happens. It happens maybe 5 10% of the time that I see, but I've seen enough of it that I warn people about it, and as a result, you again, I suggest you go low and slow. When you reach a level, of, if, you had, if you did lower level of, of intensity with shorter periods of time, and you didn't have the problem, and then you got to a, a, a longer period of treatment time and a higher intensity, <coughs> and the problem shows up, then you have irritation of the nerves. That's significant enough that it won't allow you to treat that, that way. So what you do is you back off and you do the treatment time and the treatment intensity for, and keep repeating it for a longer period of time, weeks, several weeks if you need to, one week, two weeks, and then try to go up again, just like you would with training. So once you've done enough stimulation over a long enough period of time and it makes it better, then, um, then you can advance. Now, if you're in the unfortunate position where there's just so much irritation going on and there's no, those nerves that you can't lay there long enough and you can't treat with high enough intensities, that's a problem. Um, and in that circumstance, the physical therapy may be very important, heat may be important, other kinds of therapies may be important. This is a good situation where uh, laser therapy to that tissue, to those tissues in that area, may be useful for the short term to get you off the edge of the cliff. Uh, and in the worst case scenario, you may need to have injections, you may need to do conventional me medical approaches to quiet everything down, and then you do the magnetic therapy. In this case, this is one of the few cases that I would recommend steroids. So you get steroid injections, that, that decreases the inflammation injection. You may need to have one or two uh, to, ever, to really quiet everything down. Once you've done your steroid injection, <clears throat> then you could really do significant magnetic field therapy at the time to get an even faster start on the healing process because everything's quieter already. And so you can actually do more aggressive treatment uh, temporarily. Once the steroid wears off, 
um, hopefully you'll be able to maintain the magnetic field therapy. If not, they may have to back off again. And again, hopefully you, you may be able to back off to a point where you could be higher than you were before you had the steroid injection. I hope that makes sense. But this is the way you know, doctors think or the way I would think about managing this, this type of situation. Um, and the, other thing, the other thing I should say is that probably in Maryland, it's, it's a long-term process. Um, and if you haven't had an MRI of your neck, um, then I would, I would definitely have you consider that because if you don't know what you're dealing with, um, as they say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will do. You really need to know what you're dealing with to, um, to be able to uh, advise correctly.